questions for reflection. In our first reading, we continue to hear the Lord's words being spoken to Israel through the prophet Hosea, strong, honest, and rich in mercy. And I quote, Israel, come back to Yahweh your God. Your guilt was the cause of your downfall. Provide yourself with words and come back to Yahweh. Say to him, take all guilt away and give us what is good instead of bulls. We will dedicate to you our lips. This honest acknowledgement of sin is absolutely essential to growing in the Christian life. We can't play the blame game. When we sin, we are the ones responsible. And the Lord awaits our genuine repentance. The Catholic Catechism and its treatment of sin, grace, and conversion says, and I quote, as St. Paul affirms, where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. But to do its work, grace must uncover sin so as to convert our hearts and bestow on us righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Like a physician who probes the wound before treating it, God by his word and by his spirit cast a living light on sin, end quote. And then the Catechism quotes Pope St. John Paul II with these words, Conversion requires convincing of sin. It includes the interior judgment of conscience, and this being a proof of the action of the spirit of truth in man's inmost being, becomes at the same time the start of a new grant of grace and love. Receive the Holy Spirit. Thus, in this convincing concerning sin, we discover a double gift, the gift of the truth of conscience and the gift of the certainty of redemption. The spirit of truth is the consoler. And that's paragraph 1848 of the Catechism. In his first letter to the early churches, the beloved disciple John writes, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. And that's 1 John 1, 8 through 10. Are we honest about our own sins? Or do we excuse them, even blame others? That is not the path to freedom. David, the psalmist, whose words we hear in our responsorial psalm, shows us how to be honest in confessing our sin in order to be forgiven and find the freedom for which we long. Let us hear his words and let's make them our own. And I quote, for I am well aware of my offenses. My sin is constantly in mind. Against you, you alone I have sinned. I've done what you see to be wrong, that you may show your saving justice when you pass sentence and your victory may appear when you give judgment. Let me hear the sound of joy and gladness and the bones you have crushed will dance. Turn away your face from my sins and wipe away all my guilt. In the portion of the 10th chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew, which is appointed for today's Holy Mass, Jesus is instructing the 12 before sending them out to announce that the kingdom of God is near. He warns them that they will be treated as he is being treated and they will face the same opposition. But he also tells them that the spirit of the Father will be with them and speak through them. Every word he spoke came about. In fact, the early church father and historian Tertullian wrote, the blood of the martyrs was the seed of the church. We are Christians today because they heeded his words and led by the spirit, they went out and proclaimed the message of the kingdom in both word and deed. These words of Jesus are for all of us today. We are living in an age where hostility to the Christian faith and the church is growing at an alarming rate. Like them, we are being sent out like sheep among wolves. Jesus said, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves, so be cunning as snakes and yet innocent as doves. We must be vigilant so we can recognize the wolves disguised as lambs and be able to distinguish the false from the true prophets in our own day. But we must remain simple and pure of heart in the midst of this mission. The Holy Spirit will empower us to respond to this call of Jesus.